Over the past few years, video games have successfully connected with us players on the emotional side. Video games are getting a whole lot more complex and heart-wrenching, and if you've pumped 30 or 40 hours into a game, why the hell shouldn't they be? Of course, we all have a nice happy ending after triumphing over adversity, but these games had different ideas. A depressing ending can leave a far more pronounced, lasting effect on the viewer if done right. Of course, some games are going to just indulge in downright misery, and the games we'll be looking at today are perfect examples. Stay tuned. Grand Theft Auto 4 If there's a lesson to learn from Grand Theft Auto 4, it's that no matter what choice you make, the end result is going to be a disaster. The finale of the game asks you to choose between making a deal and exacting sweet revenge. Take the deal and Nico's cousin Roman is shot dead at a wedding the next day. But take the revenge deal and instead it is Kate, Nico's love interest, who is torn to shreds in a hail of bullets. In each instance, the game allows you to retaliate, but even once the smoke is cleared, there's nothing but the sad realization that one of these characters is gone for good and won't be coming back. In my opinion, Roman's death proves far more wrenching than Kate's, but given that both of them were pretty likable characters, it's a bold move on Rockstar's part that boxes players into a corner and forces them unwittingly to choose a grim fate either way. Halo 3 After blasting through Halo 3's frenetic six-hour campaign, it seems that the war between the humans and the Covenant has been tempered at least for a while. Master Chief has saved the Earth and stopped the aliens dead in their tracks, something that should call for a jubilant celebration, except, of course, that the Covenant's genocide over the period of the war has amounted to a whopping 23 billion. Thus, most of the people who would be keen to celebrate are nothing but piles of ash. Though Halo 4 proved a little more optimistic, Halo 3's ending left us on tenterhooks for five years, wondering what would become of the human race and whether they would ever be able to recover. Does it really get much more depressing than that? Final Fantasy X Though Final Fantasy X is widely regarded by fans as the point at which the franchise began going downhill, it was a landmark outing for the series, boasting stunning next-gen visuals at the time and being the first game in the franchise to include voice acting. However, this did also create part of the problem that made Final Fantasy X so grating to play so often. The characters, specifically protagonist Titus and wacky sidekick Wacka, were just so damn irritating, a combination of over-enthusiastic voice performances and a dreadful script. It's all the more surprising, then, that Square Enix actually managed to pull out the emotional stops for the finale in which Titus ends up being spirited away while the surviving members of the crew watch on in a combination of despair and amazement. At least there was some optimism to it, I suppose, given that the enemy was vanquished. And like any story involving magic, we knew it probably wouldn't be the end of Titus, especially when the spin-off, Final Fantasy X2, was announced, which largely involved trying to regain contact with him. Red Dead Redemption 2 Red Dead Redemption ending was already a shocking one, but the sequel somehow ended up topping it, serving as a prequel, and ended up featuring a character that had never been mentioned in RDR1 as a protagonist. Red Dead 2 was obviously always going to go poorly for its main characters, but the way Rockstar pulled it off somehow managed to leave us stunned nonetheless. Arthur Morgan is built up throughout the whole game as an amazing character, probably one of the greatest video game characters of all time so seeing him meet a cruel, untimely demise was a hard pill to swallow. Yes, technically it is in the ending and you do spend a healthy chunk of time playing as John Marston in the lengthy epilogue, but we all know how that ends as well, and it ain't pretty. Nier Nier is without question the least known game on this list, and while it's rough around the edges, it does boast an ending that will completely blindside viewers with its impressive, depressing originality. A third playthrough of the game, yes, that's asking quite a lot, will finally give you the opportunity to save your possessed friend, but it comes at the ultimate price. The villain, fed up with your persistent presence in this world, wants you to agree to erase your own presence forever, and it is intended in the most literal way possible. Accept this deal, and your save file of the game will be erased, forcing you to watch as it happens. I've never seen anything like it, and though it's easy to be impressed by the sheer fourth-wall-breaking audaciousness of it all, it's also a profoundly depressing moment of video game history. Shadow of the Colossus Shadow of the Colossus is one of the greatest video games of all time, and though it's widely praised with bringing a greater sense of artistry to the medium through its splendid visuals and art style, this is also because of its nuanced, minimalist plot, which sets viewers up for one of the most miserable plot twists of all time, gaming or otherwise. You play the protagonist Wander and spend the game riding around a vast land hunting 16 so-called colossi 
which apparently hold the key to rescuing your fallen love, Mono. However, upon defeating the final one, it's revealed that in actual fact, the Colossi were actually holding back an evil demon named Dormin. Dormant, get it? Who then possesses Wander before a spell of light magic consumes the Wander Dormant hybrid. The game ends with Wander being turned into a baby with horns, while Mono seemingly vows to take care of him and heads off into the land. So, Mono and Wander don't even get to be together at the end, and were it not for the fact that Wander's valiant steed Argo, who was previously thought dead before the final boss, hobbles onto the scene at the very end, this one would be a complete bummer. Ori and the Will of the Wisps Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a game that has a bittersweet ending and in so many ways, Ori defeats Shriek. A terrifying owl that has cast a shadow over so much and so many, but watching the orphan creature die under the wings of her dead parents, it's hard not to feel sad. Meanwhile, even though the forest is restored and Ku is healed and reunited with Naru and Gumo, Ori ends up dying, merging with Seer and turning into the spiritual tree. It's a real tearjerker to say the very least. Mass Effect 3 Here's the one game on this list that's depressing, not because the subject matter dictated it, but because we were all patently lied to by BioWare, who insisted that Mass Effect 3 was going to deliver an emotional payoff to the series. I suppose in a sense they were right. Just about everyone who played the game was left infuriated and exasperated, though I imagine this isn't what the usually consistent developers were hoping for. What really rattled people was that the ending was touted to incorporate all the decisions you had made on your save file over the course of the three games, but at the end of the day, all it came down to was a choice of three colors, making all those previous decisions completely irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. The lesson learned? Don't promise things you can't deliver because you're going to be derided by angry nerds for the rest of eternity if you do. That Dragon Cancer That Dragon Cancer is an autobiographical game that tells the story of parents who have to watch their young son battle cancer before sadly losing that fight at the tender age of four. The game is depressing from start to finish, but is also incredibly powerful. Being able to experience the unequivocal intimacy in this two-hour journey is a surreal experience and one that anyone who's played it is unlikely to ever forget. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Yeah, 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 we're all familiar with what just about every game in the Metal Gear Solid series is about. You have to stop a nuclear strike before it's too late, blah, 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 but Metal Gear Solid 3 managed to sneak a fast one by players, delivering a shocking plot twist that made for one of the most brilliantly downbeat climaxes to any game ever made. Naked Snake, aka Big Boss, manages to save the day in the end, of course, but he has to kill his former mentor, the boss, in order to do so, after she defected from the US to the Soviets. However, the ending reveals that the boss was in fact a double agent, and had been helping Snake all along, proving to be arguably the real hero of the story. Nevertheless, the boss's name goes down in history as a traitor, and the final scene of the game has Snake saluting at her unmarked grave, shedding a tear and remaining one of the few who knew the truth about her actions. It's depressing, heart-wrenching, and in its own way, uplifting. This is how you end a game. Which depressing video game ending is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.